Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tony Robinson with MAP, and welcome to today's webinar titled Stressed Over a Major Plastics Facility Expansion or a New Project, presented by Nick Paradiso of Conair. Just a few notes before we get started. I will try to keep all attendees muted throughout the presentation, uh, but we will have some questions uh, posed. Oh, nope, sorry. Uh, we will have one poll at the, uh, at the very beginning, so uh, please uh, keep a lookout for that. Uh, we are recording the webinar, and it will be up on the webinar archives page in the next few days, so uh, you will need a member login to access that page, so just reach out to us if you need help with that. There will be time for questions at the end of the presentation, so please use the chat feature to send those in, and if you have any logistical issues, uh, you can use the chat, and I will help you troubleshoot. So with that being said, I will turn it over to Nick. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, so I'm uh, Nick Paradiso. I'm here with Conair. I'm our director of uh, systems group. And I'm here to talk to you today about partnering with Conair with integrated systems and the customer experience that comes along with that. Um, so I think I'd first like to uh, open up this poll. Uh, we, uh, uh, we're gonna be, of course, uh, showcasing here at MPE. So I'm curious if anyone in the attendee list um, is going to be attending NPE this year. So let that run. And while, while we're waiting for some of the uh, the inputs there, um, if you want to join our web page, uh, I could bring this up here. I'm just going to drag it over to my other screen for you to see. Um, and up on the top, there's a little registration key where uh, we're able to cover the registration cost for you um, if, you if you register off of our website. Uh, our booth is uh, located in the West Hall, uh, booth number uh, ID W2113. And if you look here on the bottom left, uh, the bottom left of the screen, you come right in the front door and you can't miss us. You'll run right into our booth. Uh, really cool stuff we're showing this year. A lot of new technology, a lot of uh, new capabilities for Conair. Uh, very exciting for us. So, Tony, you let me know when the, the poll's good and we can uh, we can keep cruising. Yeah, we're good to go. 80% of us are, are all going to NPE. So, yeah, and MAP will be there and we'll awesome. have a pavilion there. So, yeah, definitely stop by Conair and stop by MAP and say hi to both of us. Awesome. Yeah, exciting. It's back. It's been six years. So a uh, lot, lot for us to talk about. So let's, let's dive right into Conair System. So what does this look like? Uh, quick overview, and then we're going to jump into all the different workflows and, and talk about the core of the, of the presentation today. But of course, uh, Conair, we have the largest install base in North America. We are known for our material handling and processing systems. Um, of course, we do material storage as well. So just a couple of different examples of some installations to throw on the screen. Uh, to get you familiar uh, with the equipment that we're talking about today. So distribution systems, uh, processing like drying, blending, and also storage systems on the resin side. Um, we do heat transfer systems integrated into your facilities. Um, so anything from pump tanks to, um, to central chillers, <clears throat> and uh, of course the different uh, technologies um, for um, <clears throat> to be coupled with the equipment such as tower systems, adiabatic, or chillers that are inside. Uh, lastly, size reduction and regrind reintroduction systems. I like to call call it, it's kind of a funny name there, but of course we have a wide range of, uh, of granulators to do size reduction applications, but also reintroducing that regrind back into the process has been more and more popular over the years, uh, whether that's blending it in with your, uh, with your virgin material, or if it's uh, bringing it back, collecting all the regrind from the different uh, granulators, separating it from there, and then reintroducing it back uh, through a distribution table uh, back to your process as well. So let's dive into the workflow. So this is uh, this is a typical workflow that we uh, that we that we see, of course, starting with the the customer's application down here on the bottom left, and then we're going to walk through this complete workflow uh, out to when we install these systems and we we guarantee the uptime of the of the process for our customers. So uh, notice this yellow uh, arrow, and it says customer experience. Conair continues to be hyper focused on the customer experience throughout this complete process. So starting with the, the, the sales rep and the, and the regional sales manager and the consultancy that we, uh, that we conduct uh, in your facility when we start to walk through your application, we bring that inside to my team, our, our inside system specialist team, where we design, uh, we design the system, we work through all the different, uh, different equipment that we can apply against your application, and then we present the quote and we work through the revisions. You know, we're going to go through this a little bit more detail in a little bit, but it's uh, very normal for, for a quotation process to be, to be lengthy. You know, we, we, we go through different iterations. We, walk, we work through uh, different, uh, different options. We talk through different technologies and we finalize that scope. We really refine that scope of work down to a, uh, to a buy quote. 
and then we work together to to come up with an agreement. So once we once we roll this order, once the, once Conair is awarded with the business, um, then we hand this over to our project implementation team, and that's also part of the systems group, uh, which we'll get into the teams here on the next slide. But uh, the project management team is going to take that order, and you're going to be assigned a project manager. Uh, that is your single point of contact to help integrate this system into your facility. Um, of course, once we install, we, we start up the system, we hand this off to now our service and after sales support team. And that's what uh, the, uh, our customers are going to utilize moving forward to keep their production uptime um, at peak optimization. So again, from the initial application all the way through this process uh, to, the, to the final installation and commissioning, uh, we are focusing and we're going to talk today about our customer experience. So here's the systems group overview. Uh, we, we merged our post-sale efforts and our pre-sale efforts for systems business together uh, early 2023, and we created the systems group. So prior to this, there was a bunch of different teams that worked together. We, we collaborated together to put this all under one umbrella uh, under my leadership. And uh, it's something that really to look for uh, with respect to handoff of, of information and also communication with our customers. So all the different customer touch points throughout this whole process has been optimized here going into 2024. So I really wanna pinpoint our uh, experience. So our system specialists, these are the individuals that are, that are sizing equipment, that are coming up with recommendations that are essentially taking your application and we're, they're coming up with the solution, the optimal solution to put, to put against uh, uh, what your facility's needs are. Uh, 22 years of experience on average between our estimating and our sales team. Uh, that is very powerful. You know, we have with the largest install base in North America, uh, we've seen pretty much everything we need to see from, from an application standpoint. So Conair has experienced all of the different um, applications that we'd like to quote against, of course, and uh, we're going to come up with our, our educated um, system sizing uh, based on our experience. So that's, that's on the sales side. And then once we hand this over to our project management side, 15 plus years of experience on average in our project management team, and our project engineering team as well. So those, that's the support system behind it. So we, we work together, we come up with our, with our solution, and then implementing that solution is a completely different skill set. Um, how to run and how to egress material and, and, and vacuum lines and water lines out to your facility in an efficient way, uh, where, to, uh, where to install equipment, um, how to orientate the silos to best uh, utilize space, um, the list goes on. And that's where our experience comes in on the, on the post-sale efforts of the systems group. So let's do a deep dive here into the customer facing um, uh, pre-sale uh, pre experience. So of course, uh, when you have your initial inquiry, it comes in uh, a little wordy here, but let's just focus on the big bullets up on top. Uh, the big one here is the site consultation. So this is where our sales team is going to come involved. We, we, we love to, of course, we want to be on site. We want to see where this equipment is going to be located. We'd like to see your process. If it, if it exists, again, we do a lot of greenfield. So we, a lot of these, sometimes these meetings happen when the building's not even purchased yet. We're just working over teams, sharing some some ideas just to come up with an idea. But uh, in, in a lot of cases, we're, we're adding on to a facility. Our customers are expanding. Uh, they're, adding, uh, they're adding a process. They're adding more machines. And then we're going to integrate into an existing facility, too. So we'd like to be on site. And we like to work through that together uh, in a consultancy type setting. And then we start to refine that scope of work. We have to look at where our technologies match uh, the customer needs and start to work together to come up with a system design. Of course, you know, from your throughput that's running through your primary machines, we have to back that now upstream. So we start with your throughput. We have to look at what the resin needs are. Does it, does it need to be dried? Are we creating a blend? Are we adding an additive at the throat? What, what are we doing with the material? And then we're bringing that upstream as well, looking at how is the material entering into your facility? Um, does it come in via Gaylord on a truck? Are we coming in bulk truck? Are we coming in rail car? And we start to really look at this, uh, this, this system design uh, from a top level view to understand the workflow of all that, um, of, of how the resin enters the material, <clears throat> excuse me, how the resin enters the facility and how it gets distributed out to all the machines and processed. Of course, from there, we have to come up with our estimate and labor. Talk about that a little bit on the next slide. And then lastly, uh, we present the quote. And then this revision arrow comes back as we see this. Of course, this is very normal in our industry where we come up with our initial iteration and then we're going to revise it together. So we work through that process together until we're ready for, um, for the final buy quote. But I do want to bring up on the screen application guarantee proposal. So at Conair stands behind every proposal that we send to our customers. Uh, what that means is it's a performance guarantee. If we say the system is going to do 2,000 pounds an hour, the system is going to do 2,000 pounds an hour. If for whatever reason 
we run into a problem or we have a fault or something changes and it wasn't caught properly, whatever it is, we are guaranteeing that our proposal uh, and the application text on our proposal is going to be followed. We will swap equipment out. We will have service techs on site. We will dispatch engineers, whatever we need to do to ensure that the system that we that we propose and our customers purchase from us uh, meets the expectations that we put down on paper. So uh, very important note there. And that's why we we really take this process seriously. We, we like to work through this in a in a systematic approach to make sure that our proposals are going to work for our customers' applications. Uh, a couple of deliverables though, of course, the quote, the quote's gonna detail out the equipment, the price and, and, all, the, and all the application scope of work, but you're also gonna get a flow schematic. So this, these flow schematic examples are gonna show from your source out to your machines, do we do a common line system, a dedicated line? Are we going through dry, uh, drying hoppers? Are we blending the material? Whatever the equipment is that we have on our proposal, we're representing that in a flow schematic that shows the flow of material and how it distributes out into your facility. Now, some of them could be simple like this, and then we can get into extremely complex engineered uh, systems like this that are integrated into facilities. Now, granted, everything, uh, you know, it's really hard to read the screen here. Of course, this was, this was a very involved project, but uh, we handle anything from the small one to two machine shops all the way up to uh, fully integrated machines like this. I think this was a, this was a customer that had 21 thermoformers that uh, were coming off <clears throat> that were hooked up to five different uh, extruders creating roll feeds. So it was pretty, pretty awesome, pretty awesome project. But again, wide range of application. Uh, now, along with the flow schematic that's showing where all the material goes and how all that, how our quotation is going to match up with the equipment uh, that's on the flow schematic, we also do these layout drawings. Now, these may not necessarily be customer facing. Um, if we have enough, uh, I guess I should say, enough information. Uh, we'd like to show uh, with our proposal where the equipment's going to go in the facility. But again, whether it's Greenfield or whether sometimes the customer doesn't necessarily know where the equipment goes, we have to make some assumptions. So we need to document these assumptions to understand our labor. You know, if we quote 10 man days, uh, or I should say 10 crew days for an installation labor with a with certain tubing package, uh, we have to understand roughly where that equipment was supposed to be. And then our project management process after that is really going to refine that down take a look at how the bill of material stacked up pre-sale, look at it, uh, where, did the, where did all the equipment move after? Do we need to make some adjustments together with our customers? That's, that's all why we do this. So we put together what we call an as quoted layout drawing. Again, we share it with our customers. It may not necessarily be like hooked up to the, uh, actually attached to the quotation, because sometimes it's informal. Sometimes it's just in PowerPoint, even if we're dropping down a couple of boxes with some rough dimensions, just to represent roughly how the proposal was put together. And again, we turn that into a full set of engineering drawings once we hand this over to our project management process, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, so that's the, the full, the full uh, pre-sale customer experience. Now I'm gonna walk us through what this looks like from a post-sale customer experience with our project teams. So uh, similar view here, but we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this in a top level, and then I'm gonna do a deep dive to look at all the different customer touch points throughout the full project management experience with Conair. Uh, first and foremost, we, we do an on-site kickoff meeting. So if you, you purchase a system from us, again, we have, our, we have our flow schematic, we have our as quoted layout drawing, but now we really wanna refine that. We wanna walk the facility. We wanna look at exactly where the equipment's gonna go. We're gonna, sometimes we'll have an engineer uh, either on site or available to us over teams uh, with our customers just to really look through uh, everything going on in the facility. Uh, you know, you got a crane rail right in the way of where we were gonna put the, dry, you know, the, the drying system up on a mezzanine. This isn't gonna work pre-sale. So we gotta, we gotta work together and move some things around. So we're gonna refine the, uh, the overall scope of work together. Uh, until we're ready to, to, to do some customer sign-offs and then start with the project integration. So again, uh, some change requests come in. Sometimes customers, you know, we, we do run into this a good amount where we quote a drying system for five materials and then we find out they really want to dry uh, eight materials, for example. So we got to just work through that process. We get our sales team involved as well. and We start to work together on a, on, a, on a new system design, depending on whatever's going on. At the end of the day, we refine this down to something that we all agree with. We, we communicate and we come up with uh, with with a final scope of work to then uh, release uh, to our project integration team, and then we close the project off. But really, what I want to bring up on the screen now is our is our stage gate process for project management. The important part here, I'm not going to read everything here on the screen, but as we work through a system, uh, as we work through a project together, uh, from internal kickoff to customer introduction to onsite kickoff, to, we have a technical and then a logistics finalized a handshake, and then we dispatch our installation crews. 
Notice all of the purple uh, points on the screen. So we broke our tasks down to internal project management office tasks. Uh, we have some project engineering tasks that we, we really front load. We want to engineer the system, of course, before we start to install it. So we really want to bring this up, up uh, I guess upstream of the process. But again, look at all the different touch points here with our project manager. Our project management team is involved and we are, we are, we are involved with our, uh, with our projects, with our customers on a, on a weekly basis from start to finish. So we are talking a lot. We are, we are meeting weekly, we're meeting bi-weekly, whatever works for our customers really up front. And then as we start to get closer to installation, all the coordination that we're doing with, with, uh, with either other, uh, other trades that are in the facility, if we're, if we're sharing Unistrut rack with, uh, with compressed air, with, with high voltage, whatever we're doing, um, that, that we're, we're, we're working together here. And then there's some drawings that are associated with this, which I'm gonna go through here in a little bit. But again, we're working through this from stage one all the way through pr uh, project closeout. Um, this is how Conair handles systems from a project management process. Now, every system gets a customer portal. So uh, all the, the documentation, we, we're, we're sending drawings back and forth. We're looking at orientations. We're playing around with layout. Sometimes the customer wants to diagnose this information Work, work with it with their internal team, and then they're going to send it back for, for revisions, whether it's live or it's through, through via email. But we do like to use this portal because sometimes, of course, the file sizes get too big, or we want to document all the different revisions that we're doing throughout the process, just so we understand where we started with Rev1, we installed Rev15, whatever that may, may be. Uh, we have this customer portal where all this documentation is going to be located. Now, we also have all of the manuals for all the equipment that we're installing are going to be located here. We're showing our Gantt chart schedule all in this portal. So everything that, that any of the, uh, the stakeholders in our customers' facilities are going uh, to want to look at, they're going to have access to this SharePoint link, and we're going to share it with everybody that needs to be involved, whether it's the customer side or the Conair side. Um, every system gets a Gantt chart, and this is revised on a weekly basis, depending on all the changes that we may run into. So uh, here's a good example of a tiered installation. So I know it's hard to read here, but uh, here's all of our tiered installation. So this was a four dispatch uh, installation. And then we followed that, if you can see my cursor down at the bottom, we followed that with a service tech to start up the equipment that we were installing. So after the second deployment, we, we installed a certain about, you know, whatever the equipment scope of work was. And then we installed that set of equipment that we came back and then we installed, came back and installed. So all of this is going to be detailed. We're going to sign off on this before we dispatch the first installation. And then we're going to make adjustments as we go. Of course, if we run into something, or if uh, you know maybe the concrete didn't cure as quick on the on the silo on the silo pad, but that was in parallel to equipment installation, we work together, we work through it, we come up with a new plan, and then we move forward with with whatever changes we may run into. So here's some uh, here's some uh, some really really detailed work that we do here at Conair. So we we do 3D isometric drawings when when either the uh, the project calls for it or the customer requests it. So. Uh, based on the size of the system, you're going to get these, I, I should say, automatically. If we do a multi-million dollar project with, with, with you and it's greenfield, you're going to want 3D, model, uh, 3D models of the equipment and the installation uh, egress of all the piping. So we're going to we're going to add that to our proposal. Or if we work together in the sales process and we understand that there's going to be a, a really difficult area where the installation contractors are going to have to figure out how to get around something, whether that's going up and over a crane, uh, around crane rails, or if we're doing some sort of a penetration through a stand-up if you're doing a greenfield and we're and, and it's one of those stand-up buildings where they pour the concrete walls first and then they stand them up you got to know where that square needs to be so they can run all the pipes through run into that all the time we're going to do this and in, in, in 3d to, and work together come up with that sign off before the building even starts to get built so uh, a lot of a lot of engineering work goes into these but here's just a couple of examples of, of just some isometric drawings that we run into um, if we're doing a, a, a drying system, central drying system, or in this case, this is a, a PET single drying hopper, large dryer system, we have a hard pipe kit. So we want to make sure we're, we're sending the right bill of material. So we're doing these drawings anyways internal, and then we can share those with our customers and come up with a, a sign off. So do you want the door on the drying hopper to be rotated 90 degrees? We work through all these orientations, come up with a final plan, and then we sign off and then we, uh, then, then we implement. Uh, here's a really good example of the need for for doing this type of upfront engineering work. So the, here's, a, here's a, uh, a very tight mezzanine that we had to integrate our uh, central drawing system on. So uh, imagine showing up, we don't do the drawing, imagine showing up to, the, uh, to do install and that we just got to figure it out in the field, right? That, that's really not the, that's not what we want to do because now our installation is going to take three weeks where ideally if we engineer it upfront, it may only be one week, a one or two week deployment. So, so we want to engineer this upfront. We want to talk together 
Uh, we work with our customers to make sure that this works for them. We walk through and explain where all the maintenance points are. We're looking at the, uh, the certain requirements for, um, <clears throat> for offsets for electrical cap cabinets or whatever the code is going to tell us. And then we execute, we, we, we sign off and then we execute an installation. So here's the final installation from the, the original 3D model up front. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome when you engineer this stuff up front, it goes seamless in the field. Um, silo orientation drawings. Here's a here's a here's uh, one of our systems that we did where we were filling silos from multiple different locations, um, different pressure systems from in the plant or from rail car unloading. So we really had to come up with a plan on how to properly install all of this and make it all work upfront before the silos were manufactured. So again, a lot of upfront, uh, a lot of upfront engineering, sign off communication with our customers, and then we implement moving forward um, for a seamless process. Everything that I showed you so far was water systems, or excuse me, material handling systems. But we also do the same with our with our uh, with our heat transfer water system. So uh, whether it's flow schematics that we show here, or uh, I'll go back to that one in a second, or we we do uh, full full blown installation drawings like this, uh, and I'll get to that uh, when we couple that with material handling and heat transfer. If I go back to this one, here's just another example, different technology. Uh, outside uh, condenser technology, and then here we are with our flow schematic showing how the system is is uh, is being installed up front. But again, uh, packaging these systems with Conair is very powerful. If you have your heat transfer needs and you have your resin delivery needs and resin processing needs, we can put these all together into a into a, a package deal, so to speak. And then when we do our engineering and then our in, our installation in the field, now all of this is coupled together. So now we're sharing utility runs. We're sharing utility drops at each of the presses or each of the machines. Uh, we do drawings like this. We do cross-sectional detail drawings to show how are the pipes going to be run. We have our water pipes up top, uh, water piping up top, and we have all of our material and vacuum uh, runs down here below. Perhaps we're sharing with other trades, like I said prior, uh, where, where there may be electrical on this rack, there may be compressed air, there may be something else. Uh, communication, whatever we may, uh, whatever uh, uh, the customer's facility really calls for, we're working together through that process to come up with a, uh, with a, with essentially an installation instruction for the contractor to now install the system. So now let's get into some project installation capabilities here with Conair and things to look at. So, so uh, Conair, uh, Conair employs four three-man crews. So these are Conair employees. These are these are crews that work on 100% Conair work and we keep them uh their, their utility is almost at like a 99 percent, i should say so we we keep them very busy because uh there's just a lot of a lot of need for i should say uh, expertise when it comes to installing systems so we have our crews we also have a certification process so we have um certified contractors i should say if i add these two up 50 59 of them i should say are uh, are certified con air we prefer 17 of them and then we have like ones that we just use on occasion but regardless uh, in order to install a conair system all external contractors say independent contractors go through a training process with us we certify them we certify that they're going to install it the conair way which is the way that works the way that we uh, that we have developed over the years and we've learned over the years and we've refined that process and then we uh, we have them on our certified list right so now we we have a whole library of contractors to pull from but also uh, we do have our internal crews that we dispatch uh, as needed, depending on what the con uh, what the installation calls for. I also show here site specific companies. We just, we have some key accounts that uh, that, that suggest, or I should say require to have um, you know, their own con or their, their preferred contractor, so to speak. Uh, we work with them, we get them certified. And of course uh, that list is ever growing. Now, quick uh, quick note here is we, uh, are, we essentially what I'm showing here is we, we like to promote within so all of our crew chiefs on our uh, on our crews um, are promoted up from uh, from when they start with us um, uh, and as, uh, as crew mechanics uh, each each crew has a crew chief and then two crew mechanics and then we can dispatch uh, multi -cr uh, multiple crews to different facilities depending on what the installation schedules call for. Um, if we could do it with one crew great and do it over four or five weeks if it's a big system, or if we're doing a shutdown scenario, we can only be in the facility for one week to install a new drying system on a mezzanine. We may send two or three crews out to do that. It's all part of how we how we organize our uh, our efforts and work together. Now, service support, handing these systems off to our service uh, service and after sales team. Uh, I like to call. I really have been using this for years now. Conair has an army of service techs, um, and it's it's pretty much the best way I could explain this. We have field service technicians, we have phone support, we have specialists that are that are up here in our headquarter location north of Pittsburgh, 
but also we have specialists. So if it starts with a, with a, with a phone call and we start to work through, uh, work through the different, uh, different things that we can do over the phone. I think I even show, yeah, here we go. I, uh, 50 percent of incoming issues we can resolve essentially with our first call responders. Then those get escalated to specialists and those specialists just deal with that, that one product line, a hundred percent of the time. So we have a dryer specialist, we have a blender specialist, we have a systems and conveying specialist. So, uh, and, and, and the list goes on water, we have downstream extrusion, whatever the product line really calls for that. That's where, if we do have a complex issue, we escalate that to our specialist. And then if we have to dispatch field service tech, say you call it 20% of the time, so to speak, uh, we, we have to dispatch a field, a field service tech to go diagnose the issue further in the field. So uh, going back to this, just again, army of service techs, we have, we have a huge support. And then we also supplement this with certified con, uh, uh, contract technicians. So just like I explained how we have uh, installation contractors that go through a training program, they have to take, literally go through multi, a multi-day program with us, and then they take a, a test and they have to pass that test in order to be certified. We do the same thing with our service technicians. If we, if we dispatch a technician and it's not a Con Air employee, it's an independent service contractor, they know what they're working on. They know the equipment that they're, that they're looking at and they're certified. So whatever work they do is gonna be under our, uh, under our watch and we trust what they're doing in the field. Uh, here's a, just a quick map to show our distribution of service technicians. So whether these are Con Air um, <clears throat> technicians or the purple are gonna be independent uh, contractors that are certified. You can see we have a very a vast coverage, but of course uh, we have a we have a, a part of our army, so to speak, is going to be based out of north of Pittsburgh, out of our um, out of our Franklin location, out of our manufacturing facility north of Pittsburgh. Um, they can get on a plane and fly anywhere we need to have them. So anywhere in North America, you have a we you have a um, a facility. We're going to dispatch a service tech to your facility if we need to. Uh, a couple more things to cover here, and then we'll we'll wrap up. Uh, ma machine health assessments. So uh, this is this is a service that we provide where we can dispatch a service tech and they can go through your system. Uh, they can make recommendations. They can see what works and what doesn't work. Work with your maintenance crews to see, hey, you know what? You're, you're really not, uh, look, uh, you're not keeping up with your central dust collectors, for example. I do suggest that instead of, uh, you know, cleaning these out once a month, perhaps you should clean these out once every other week. Work together with a program and then any uh, um, any parts or labor that come out of it. So if we come out and we, we realize that, you know what, we have to do a, a desiccant change on, on your, on your um, uh, or essentially a, a desiccant wheel change, excuse me, on your central drying system, uh, we can now quote that labor for you and then we can discount that labor af after it's happened from a machine health assessment. So again, this is one of the, one of the, the options here is to uh, have a service tech come out and just really audit your system, look at how your system is running and then come up with recommendations and we can put together a proposal to fix those recommendations for you. Or uh, we can talk about service agreements. So what we've seen and what we've seen trending uh, year over year is that really our customers just don't have enough labor or they cannot retain enough labor in their maintenance and mechanics uh, team, uh, <clears throat> let alone operators really at the end of the day. So uh, we can come up with a program where we dispatch uh, a, a service technician, call it four times a year, maybe once a quarter, we come out, we change all of your filters, we check the oil on all your pumps, we come up with a list of whatever works for your facility, and then we can come up with an agreement together to get you on the schedule and then have you have you based on a uh, on an iteration, say a uh, service tech visit from there. Uh, these are very powerful and this side of our business has been growing, honestly, over the last, or really I should say over the last four to five years um, where uh, our customers are starting to really utilize this service. Because again, your your operators, your, your, uh, your maintenance technicians, they're focusing on everything else in your facility. Uh, sometimes they're just not able to get to the, to, to the preventative maintenance side of, the, of your business. Let us do that for you uh, and reach out to us and uh, if this is something that's uh, of interest to you. So thank you for, for hearing about our systems group and our system side of our business. Um, I'd like to just again re uh, reiterate uh, if you're interested, uh, if you're not already signed up to go to NP and you're interested in that, please head to our website and you can claim your free pass. And uh, look for me or any, any of the Kind Air team members uh, to talk about your next project. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nick. Um, we did. Uh, we do have some time for questions. Uh, we did get some in the chat. So the first one I got, what does Con Air consider a system? Is it anything with multiple pieces of equipment? 
Yeah, great question. So yeah, I, I would say uh, when multiple pieces of equipment are, are are hooked up together and they're they're talking to each other or they have to talk to each other for the whole system to work, of course that's going to be a system. But really, what we look at is uh, is there going to be an installation or or a commissioning that has to do with the uh, with the proposal? Uh, I should say, or with the with the overall scope of work of what the of what the system is going to be. But I would say if I go back to probably one of my one of my nice flow schematics here, for example. Like anything on on these flow schematics is going to be a system. So this is where we're, we have a we have a central vacuum pump that's supplying vacuum, for example, to all these different receivers, delivering resin to all these machines. That is considered a system. We have a control system here that that's hooked up. That's uh, doing all the remote I/O to make sure the system is going to work properly. This would be considered what we call a system. So if you have a if you have a a need for a bunch of portable dryers, where those dryers are going to be. There's an application for them to be set up for machine one, then machine two, machine three. We have a whole other side of our business that handles that. That's our unit side of our business where we're going to quote a bunch of dryers. Those dryers are self, uh, self-sustaining, self I should say, should say self, um, self-standing. self uh, They come out of the box, so to speak, and then there's a, there's a setup wizard and then you, you understand how to install them. They don't require us to come in and install the, and, and commission the equipment. Uh, that would not necessarily be called a system. So we, we do we do systems. Uh, based on essentially the equipment needing to be integrated together. That's what we call a system. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the next question I got, if I order a system, does it automatically include the project management? Yep. Yep. So we're going to have it on there. Uh, we do uh, highly, highly suggest that to, to have project management, mainly because if you remember all those customer touch points, uh, there's a lot of communication that goes into um, installing, or I should say uh, working together on sign off, as well as uh, working together with uh, with finding an installation contractor and then a schedule. So all of these purple touch points is what comes with our project management line. It is on average a very low percentage of the overall capital cost of a Conair, a Conair system, honestly. Two yeah. percent, um, maybe two two to five percent if it's a huge system. But uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's something to, to to highly consider based on all these customer touch points. Uh, the next one. Is lead time on Conair machinery attached to availability of project managers and installation teams, the, the personnel side of it? Uh, we wouldn't want to delay our equipment arrival due to scheduling conflicts with uh, the availability of a project manager. Sure. Okay, that's a great question. So yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we we have we have capacity and that we have we have we have booked capacity and we have available capacity, but Conair, uh, we have staffed our team to be extremely flexible. We we have uh, we have very great handoffs. We 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 work with our, all of our customers to move things around. What we have found over the last couple of years, honestly, is our customers are moving things a lot more than than we may move something. If we have if we if we need to ship equipment early or late, if we want to try to coordinate trucks, that's one thing to try to move like that final last couple of weeks before before deploying an insulation contractor. But we have found honestly that customers are the ones that are like we get up to about a, a, a month prior to the, to the, to the prior agreed upon installation date. And then there's something that happens on their end. So we're moving around. So we deal with this every day. We have a dispatch team that is reshuffling our schedule, honestly, on a daily basis. It's something we're very used to. Um, I would say that, no, there is no issues with lead time or availability uh, when, when deciding whether to go with Conair for your system. Uh, these, these systems are multi-month projects where we're, we're out, we're out of ways and then we're always able to try to kind of adjust and, take care of priorities or take care of escalations as needed. All right. Um, one last question that I got. Uh, it seems like Conair has a strong focus on complete systems. Will I still be able to order individual pieces of equipment in the future or will Conair only do the system sales? Sure. Another great question. Yeah. So uh, where, where we have our systems group, which I just explained, I uh, really talked about today, we have a whole other group of our business, and that's called our units team. Uh, and it's got its own its own complete structure with inside sales. Uh, it's got a bunch of project uh, product managers that are associated with each product. Uh, and honestly, that that whole team is really geared towards those single pieces of it. We call it units, but it's it's the net thirty business. It's the individual piece of equipment business. So if you need a blender, if you need a portable dryer, if you need a portable chiller. Um, if you need a loader uh, to integrate onto your existing system, uh, self-contained or central, um, we have a whole other team that's going to handle that. So absolutely, that is that is uh, in parallel to systems focus. We have a focus on units, uh, uh, units go to, go to market strategy as well. 
All right. Well, I didn't see any other questions come through the chat. So Nick, I want to thank you and uh, the rest of Con Air for all of the information today. Uh, just a reminder to all the attendees, uh, the recording will be posted uh, by the end of the week. And uh, thank you all for being here. And with that, I will uh, say goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.